Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining me today at the Punlo Coffee Table. I hope you're all doing well. And today we're going to be continuing our series on Philippians with Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Now, before we start, I want to just remind everyone, like I have in all these videos, who wrote the book of Philippians. Well, it was a letter written to the people in Philippi, the church in Philippi, by the Apostle Paul. At least that's what most historians believe. And most historians believe he was in prison in Rome when he wrote this letter. And that's the reason it's so amazing. This is called the Joy Epistle. Paul is so positive and joyful in his tone throughout this letter, despite the fact he's in prison. And so keep that in mind as we go through the study that Paul's not in a very good situation when he's writing this letter, yet his attitude and his tone is all very, very positive. I'm going to be reading out of the New King James Version today. But, of course, you can use whatever translation you have. Uh, the message is consistent, and I've always heard the best translation is the one you read. So, if you're reading it, keep doing it. Let's read Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort in love, if any fellowship of the Spirit... If any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. Let's pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, guide our conversation today. Uh, help me to stay out of the way so the message that you have for the listener can come through. And if I say something wrong, well, don't let them remember that part. Help them to remember what you wanted them to hear. And I ask this in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Well, okay. So before we start our study today, this section, like in many Bibles, has headings. Uh, and in my Bible, the New King James, it says, unity through humility. But remember, these aren't in the original transcripts. Uh, the translators have added these section headings, kind of like an outline. And I find them very interesting to see what the different translators said. So again, the New King James says, unity through humility. The New Living Translation says, have the attitude of Christ. Uh, the King James says, being one in Christ. And the NIV says it like this, imitating Christ's humility. And I think I might like the NIV title the best. Regardless of which translation you have, Paul is going to be telling us something that we need to do to be like Jesus. And I think whenever a book in the Bible is telling us a way to be a better follower of Jesus, we probably better pay attention. So let's break it down a little closer. Let's start with just verses 1 and 2. So this is Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, in any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, and being of one accord, of one mind. So remember, Paul has just finished talking about suffering in chapter 1. He's telling us that we're going to suffer for Christ, and it's a privilege to suffer for Christ. And then he comes back that, yes, we are going to face troubles in life and suffering in life, but the consolation is Jesus Christ. We're going to have comfort from God. We're going to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit, and we're going to have the, the mercy and affection from God himself. These are pretty amazing things. And Paul is telling the Philippians that his joy, his personal joy, comes from them having unity. And he says like-mindedness, he says same love, but what he really means is stay focused on the, the main thing. Another way to say it might be keep the main thing the main thing. Now this doesn't mean you have to agree on everything. It means that we don't concentrate on the non-essentials that we don't agree with. Focus on the things we agree on, which is the essentials of our faith. And don't get divided because of sideshow issues that you, you might disagree about. 
in uh, I think it's really important to just focus on following Jesus. And I think if we do that, then we can be like-minded and we can have unity. And Paul goes on to say it this way in the next couple of verses. In verse 3, he says, Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. That's the New King James. But like I did last lesson, I want to read it out of a couple other translations so you can have idea of maybe a little rounder understanding. Let's read out the King James next. The King James says this, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. It's really kind of nice. The New Living puts it this way, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than yourself. I really like that, but I don't normally read this version. It's called the Contemporary English Version, but I really like the way it put this verse. Don't be jealous or proud, but be humble and consider others more important than yourself. And I think that really captures the essence of what Paul was trying to say. Don't think of yourself better than others. That's really what it is. If, uh, if you can be humble, and not proud and consider others more valuable than yourself then a lot of the problems we have in life kind of go away and i really like reading these different translations together because it gives us that better fuller understanding of the english and better understanding of probably what was intended in the original language so stay away from being selfish and proud and think of others you know don't be jealous so the essence of this is how we treat people right. When Paul is telling us to resist our nature and instead think of others first, that is the way Jesus wants us to live. And when you put other people more important than yourself, you do the right thing every time. And it doesn't matter what your circumstances are. And Paul continues in chapter in a sorry, in verse four. Let each of you look out not only for your own interests, but also for the interests of others. That's the New King James. So let me again read it from the King James Version, and it says this, Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Maybe not easier to understand. Let's talk about the New Living. New Living puts it this way, Don't look out only for your own interests, but take the interests of others too. That's nice. And then the New American Standard Bible says it this way, and I kind of like this language. It says, do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. It really kind of captures it, I think. And I hope you are seeing the benefit of reading multiple translations, especially in English. Each has something to offer us, and it helps us understand what Paul and God are trying to convey to us in this writing. You know, Jesus told us to love others the way that he loves them. So we must be concerned about others, not just ourselves. We, we don't take just care of ourselves or our family. We have to take care of others. Sometimes that means our best interest is not what's in the best interest of others, which means we have to take their interest first considering them equally or better than ourselves so this is what god's plan looks like this is what living in the kingdom of god looks like looking out for others not just ourselves so let's review a little bit what is our consolation that paul is talking about in these verses well paul told us that we're going to face hard times we're going to suffer in this life. Everyone does. But Jesus is our consolation. His comforting love, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, and then the affections and mercy that we get from our God. Knowing God loves us and having the comfort of the Holy Spirit makes it easier for us to face whatever it is that's going to come at us in this world. We can be prepared because we know that we're not alone. God is with us. Uh, another question. Why be humble? Why is Paul asking us to be humble? 
Well, we are followers of Jesus, and he told us to be humble, to treat others like they have a value, like the value that he has for them. The first thing we must do is humble ourselves. This means don't be proud or jealous or selfish, but instead we have to think of others as more important than ourselves. The last question, how do we be humble? Now, it sounds similar, right? You know, why humble? Because Jesus told us. But how do we do it? Well, we think of others. We think of them first. We don't think just of ourselves. We want the best for others. We're not selfish. As followers of Jesus, we have to think about what is the best for everyone around us, not just for us. And when someone succeeds, we are happy for them instead of being jealous. So let me leave you with this today. Everyone is selfish, including myself. Paul is acknowledging this, uh, that all of us have these traits. That's the reason he's talking about it. But Jesus is calling us to be better than we really are. He's a asking us to live this better life. And the life in the kingdom of God is where we all take care of each other. No one is more important than anyone else. We are like-minded. We have the same love. Where we don't... Okay, maybe i say this a little different. Where we do what is best for others, regardless of what's going to happen to us. But if you're going to suffer anyway, in this life you're going to face troubles and trials, why not suffer with a purpose which is to show the love of Jesus to everyone you're around. And when you have, well, following Jesus has prices. There's a price, there's a cost to follow Jesus, but it comes with a whole lot of fringe benefits. We get to be comforted when we're suffering. We have a lot of company in our suffering from other Christians. Uh, Jesus suffered. Uh, Jesus gives us hope and peace and assurance and joy no matter what our circumstances are. And that's because of the relationship we have with Jesus. If we know our side's going to win in the end, it makes it easier for us to face whatever it is that we are facing today. You know, our King is just. Our King is loving. Our King is trustworthy. King Jesus is the one that I want to follow, and I trust him in every activity. So at least for me, that sounds pretty good. You know, I don't have to be concerned about the outcome of my situations. I know things are going to happen occasionally that are bad for me, but I'm going to trust Jesus, and that's going to help me to get through those circumstances. I love and trust my Lord Jesus. That's all you have to, to say and then believe and that will change the way you view your circumstances. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this letter from Paul. You know, help us to read it and study it and meditate on it so we can get the message that you have for us in this beautiful letter of Paul. You are my King and you are my Lord. And I trust you with my outcome, no matter what circumstances I'm facing, I will choose to trust you and to love you so that I can have that hope and peace and joy and assurance no matter what I'm facing. And I pray that for my listener, that they might uh, have that peace that surpasses all understanding that can only come from you. And I ask all these things in your name, Lord Jesus. Amen. So thank you very much for joining me today at the Punlo Coffee Table. Uh, I decided to do this outside today. It's a little bright. I apologize for the glare if there is one. Uh, the weather's nice here in Houston, and I just wanted to share it with you. So I hope you'll join us for the rest of this study on Philippians as we go through this letter of Paul. You can email me directly if you have any comments or obviously leave it here on our website. I really appreciate you joining us today. I know you have a lot of things that you could be doing, and I appreciate you spending your time with me today. So until next time, from the Puno Coffee Table, God bless.